Welcome back. Today we're going to be writing our first C++ program to send our drone to waypoints. Uh, this this uh, this tutorial uses my GNC API that I developed. Um, it basically simplifies the programming process. Uh, so there's a lot of underlying code that um, is just um, not necessary for a lot of flight operations. So I kind of removed that and made it a lot easier for you guys. Um, and th this will allow you to just focus on the utility of the drone and the mission that the drone has rather than all the different flight dynamics and whatnot. I will be going over how the uh, how the underlying concepts in the in the API work in future tutorials, but uh, for this tutorial I'm going to show you how the API works and how you can use this um, in your own applications. So as this is our first um, programming tutorial, um, you need to make sure that you have a text editor. My favorite text editor is Sublime and you can install it by running these commands in your terminal. Um, so I've already installed it so I'm just gonna go ahead and open up a terminal and then I'm gonna go CD into catkin slash source and my favorite thing to do with Sublime is uh, write subl and then dot and then we'll end up opening up Sublime um, and it will end up uh, basically having the whole Catkin workspace right here so you can jump between all your different um, uh, ROS packages that you're programming. Um, so first thing we're going to do is um, clone in my IQGNC uh, repo. This repo has the, the GNC API in it and this is the ROS package that we will be writing our code in. So let's go ahead and clone that in Catkin slash source. All right. So now that that's cloned in, uh, we can see we have IQ GNC right here. So we'll just open that up, and then um, we're going to be writing um, a C++ program called Square.cpp. This will basically make the drone take off and then go in a square. And before we can do that, we have to add the Square.cpp file to the uh, to build, right? So here, I'm just going to Control C and then add this to the C make list in IQGNC and then C make list and then scroll all the way to the bottom and just add this here right so to build a, a C++ file you have to have these two uh, functions add executable and then the name of your ex executable and then uh, path that to the C++ file and then a link target libraries the executable plus the catkin libraries uh, and you'll have to do that for every C++ file that you ever make with ROS. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make the square.cpp file in our uh, source folder. So I'm going to go ahead and make new file and then control S and then square.cpp save. Alright, so you may also notice that um, there's another CPP file here, and this is the whole worked out tutorial. This one works, so if you can't get it to run, you can just um, build the package and then run the, the executable that's associated with this, and that should be in the in the written tutorial. So the first thing we want to do is we got to add all the functions that are associated with the control API. So just go ahead and copy in uh, this GNC functions.hpp. And then uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is add our int main um, function here. So I'm going to copy this in and then I'm going to talk about uh, what all this code means. So um, if you never programmed uh, in C++ before, you have to have all this, this, uh, this int main function uh, no matter what. And this is where the, the code um, that you write will be run, basically. Um, and then there's two arguments here. There's an int RGC and int char RGB and basically what these allow is for you to put in command line arguments and then um, basically every time you write a ROS node you have to have these two um, uh, functions right so you have ROS init and then that takes in the, the, uh, the arguments from the command line and then we just name our node something so I named the node uh, NGC node 
or GNC node, I'm sorry, <laughs> had a little bit dil had a dyslexic moment there. Um, and then uh, you have to also specify a node handle. And basically this node handle is the way that um, you can access the communications uh, within ROS. So you also have to add this. All right, so next thing. Uh, we have to add this function called init publisher subscribers. Um, so this function basically initializes all the different uh, publishers and subscribers that we're going to need to uh, communicate with our drone. Um, and so in ROS, uh, the, the way you communicate between nodes is with publishers and subscribers. And basically, the publishers uh, push data away from your node and subscribers pull data into your node. Um, and so there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes within the API, uh, but you need to do this, otherwise um, your um, C++ node is not going to be able to communicate with the drone. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we have to add these three uh, functions and I'm going to talk about each of the functions uh, individually. So go ahead and paste these guys in. So wait for connect is basically a function uh, that's mainly used uh, on your drone. So if you haven't initialized the communication between your companion computer and the drone, uh, you want the C++ or you want your C++ node to wait until that connection is established. Um, and this this uh, function will just keep uh, looping it until it recognizes that uh, you have communication with the flight board that you're going to be communicating with. The next function is wait for start and basically this uh, is waiting for a signal to the drone um, to initialize uh, the different the autonomous the autonomous program right and so the the way you initialize this autonomous program is switching the mode in Arducopter to mode guided right and so there's a couple different ways you can uh, initiate this, right? So you can bind one of the switches on your controller to mode guided, right? So on our, on my Spectrum controller, right, I have a three position switch and I usually have the first one uh, binded to stabilized mode, um, which is basically a manual mode. And then I have the middle one um, binded to, to loiter mode, which will basically hold the position without any inputs in it. and then the third one is my guided mode and so when I flip it to the third uh, position then uh, this program will start running and it'll go into the autonomous uh, functions and the really nice thing about this is that um, if w when you're testing and you switch your drone out of guided mode it'll actually just take on the other uh, modes and will stop uh, listening to the autonomous commands um, so this is a really great way or this is this is a really really great safety feature to utilize uh, when you're not a hundred percent sure that your program is going to work all right so I'm just gonna keep it simple for this uh, tutorial video and uh, we're just gonna go through takeoff and then I'm gonna show you how to build it and run it and then in the next tutorial I'm gonna go I'm gonna go over how we can make the drone go to waypoints um, so the last command here is going to be a takeoff command and then how high you want the, the drone to go. So for this one, we'll just say three meters. Um, next thing we're going to do is just go control S, save this, and then we'll go back into our terminal and run catskin build. All right, perfect. Now that that has built, uh, we're going to go ahead and source the bash RC that way, um, we can find where the executable is that we just wrote. So just go ahead and write source and then tilde slash dot bash rc bash rc there we are source that and then we're going to do uh, and then now we're going to launch the simulation as we've been doing in the previous tutorials so let's go ahead and make a couple of terminals and in the first terminal, we'll go ahead and do a ROS launch IQ underscore sim. And then we're going to run the runway uh, dot launch. And then in the next one, we'll go ahead and run the start software in the loop script. 
and basically this will start up the gazebo and then the other one will start up Articopter as we've been doing in the last couple of tutorials. So after uh, Articopter started, uh, started starting up, uh, we'll go ahead and launch Mavros, which is the communication between Articopter and ROS. So go ahead and do ROS launch, launch, and then IQ underscore sim, and then APM dot launch, and then run that. All right, perfect. So the last thing we need to do is we need to run the autonomous program that we just wrote. So we'll go ahead and run ROS run and then IQ underscore GNC and then the executable that we just wrote which is square. So um, let's just go ahead and run that. So one more important thing to mention again is that uh, before you run any autonomous program or take out the drone or fly it in any way, uh, you basically have to wait for this uh, this to show up. The EKF2 IMU1 is using GPS and EKF2 IMU0 is using GPS. Um, this basically just makes sure that the drone has a 3D fix. Um, so to, to run this program, uh, we have to switch the, the drone into mode guided. So we'll come to our map proxy terminal and then type mode guided. And uh, basically, the drone will go through um, a couple seconds of initializing the reference frame, and then it'll go ahead and take off. So uh, that'll be it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to show you how we can get the drone to fly to different places that are interesting uh, for us. So see you in the next one.